know, it starts with quality genetics. Um, if you have the, the potential in those animals to produce quality steaks like this, that is a full term demand. There's no question about it. These steaks will sell themselves and ultimately go back to the producers themselves, increasing the value of their cattle. Now is not the time to cut back on quality and never will. Um, just keep making the high quality cattle that you can. Look for those animals that have the potential to farm the well and you're going to continue to drive the demand and drive the the acceptance of that high quality acceptance. Are more consumer markets willing to put more butchers into markets today, do you think? Is that going to be a growing demand you yeah. think, in the coming years? It depends on where you go. There are some areas, more metropolitan areas, are looking for that artisanal touch. The actual hands-on butcher, the classical butcher, so to say. But in a lot of other cases, too, where it's not as concerned out in the more rural areas where supermarkets are popping up here and there, you do see a lot of what's called case-ready items, where a packer actually prepares the cuts themselves, pre-packaged them at a packing facility, and send that out where all the, all the grocery store has to do is pop up in the box and put it in the case. So it's an improvement of efficiency. And it's just a different model for pretty much resulting in the same thing. We're still having a high quality product that's out there and, and as long as you start with that, regardless of if you have an artisanal butcher or if you have a, a case ready item that's just ready to pop out of a box and put it into a case, you're still going to have that good experience. I think we're realizing each and every day uh, that we have to do a better job of, of talking about what we're doing in, in agriculture. And it's really exciting as someone that's grown up in this to now have the opportunity to take folks that maybe for the first time ever uh, have never or have never been on a farm out and and show them the reality of what's going on. Uh, they read so much, so much mis misinformation out there. I think the LFTB has been a perfect example and a reminder to us that folks are so disconnected from their food supply. And so uh, it's really, I think it's it's for everyone in the industry, it's, it's in our best interest and really our responsibility to take some pretty significant steps to reach out uh, talk to consumers and be as transparent and open as we can about what's really going on. I've made it my business to make a connection between what appears on the plate and where it comes from. In writing about restaurants and food culture these days, most of the focus is on the chefs and the wonderful things that they do with ingredients. But I am interested in and I want my readers to know about there's a larger circle of effort and it's the farmers and the ranchers and the meat cutters like we, we worked with today in that fabrication session um, that there is a very big circle of effort that goes into everything we eat and we ought to care about that. We ought to be respectful of that. Maybe it'll help us not to waste food. Maybe it'll help us to make good choices and certainly it will help support the people who make it their life's work to be sure we have good things to eat.